Looking to give your Linux Mint system a fresh, modern look? Today, we'll walk through how to install the beautiful and highly customizable KDE Plasma Desktop on Linux Mint, step by step. Before we begin, it's important to know what we're working with. Linux Mint uses the Cinnamon Desktop by default, and switching to KDE is not officially supported by Mint anymore. KDE Edition was discontinued after Mint 18.3. So this method installs KDE on top of Mint, which may cause inconsistencies or conflicts. For a smoother KDE experience, consider using Kubuntu or KDE Neon. Before we begin installing KDE Plasma on Linux Mint, let's first go over a few basic requirements to ensure a smooth process. First, make sure you already have Linux Mint installed. It doesn't matter if you're using the Cinnamon, Mate, or XFCE edition, KDE can be added on top of any of these. Next, you'll need an active internet connection. The installation will download a lot of packages from the official Ubuntu or Mint repositories, so a stable connection is essential. Also, make sure you have at least 5 GB of free disk space. While the minimal KDE setup is relatively lightweight, the full desktop environment, especially with extra apps, can take up more space. Finally, you should be comfortable using the terminal. You don't need to be an expert. Just basic knowledge like running commands, installing packages, and copying and pasting in the terminal will be enough. With all these in place, you're ready to start the KDE installation. Before starting the KDE installation, it's a good idea to take a snapshot of your system using TimeShift. This acts like a restore point, so if anything goes wrong, you can easily roll back to your working setup. Just open TimeShift, click Create, and let it finish the backup. It only takes a few minutes and can save you hours later. All right, now let's dive into the core part of this video, installing KDE Plasma on Linux Mint. We'll do this in four steps. Just follow along carefully in the terminal. Before installing anything new, it's important to make sure your system is fully up to date. This prevents conflicts and ensures smooth installation. Run this command, sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade dash y this will refresh your package list and upgrade any outdated packages in one go now that our system is ready let's understand the different package options available when installing kde plasma kde isn't just a desktop environment it's a whole ecosystem so depending on what you need there are three main installation choices let's break them down option one this is the most lightweight option it gives you just the Plasma desktop and the core components needed to run it. No extra applications, no bloat. It's perfect if you want a minimal KDE environment and prefer to install only the apps you need manually. The option two is KDE standard. This is the balanced recommended choice for most users. It includes the Plasma desktop along with commonly used KDE applications like Dolphin, the file manager, console, the terminal, and a few other handy tools. You get a fully usable system right out of the box, without it being too heavy. Now, option three, that is KDE Full. As the name suggests, this installs the complete KDE suite. That means not only the desktop and core apps, but also personal information management tools like Kmail and Contact, KDE games, system utilities, development tools, and more. It's ideal if you want the full KDE experience but it does take up significantly more disk space and installation time. Now, depending on the package you chose earlier, minimal, standard, or full, run only one of these commands. For minimal KDE desktop, sudo apt install KDE Plasma Desktop dash Y. For the standard setup, sudo apt install KDE Standard dash Y. For the full KDE experience, sudo apt install KDE full dash Y. This process can take a while depending on your internet speed and the package size, so be patient. While KDE full is installing, I'm fast forwarding the process to save your time. During installation, if you're asked to choose a display manager, select SDDM using the arrow keys and press enter. KDE uses a different login manager called SDDM, which is designed to work better with Plasma than Linux Mint's default, LightDM. But if you're not prompted, don't worry, just run these two commands manually, sudo apt install dash y and sudo 
DPK-Reconfigure SDDM. In the configuration window that appears, select SDDM and confirm. Everything is now in place. Just reboot to start using KDE. Once your system reboots, you'll notice that the login screen looks different. That's because you're now using SDDM, the KDE Display Manager. But before you log in, there's one small step to make sure you're actually launching into KDE Plasma and not your old desktop. Look near the bottom of the login screen. You'll see a small session menu, often represented by a gear icon or sometimes a drop-down list. Me now click it and you'll see a few desktop session options. Depending on your hardware and what was installed, these may include Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, and Plasma. We've now entered the beautiful KDE Plasma desktop, sleek, fast, and incredibly customizable. Let's explore the Start menu, which is neatly organized into categories like Internet, Office, Multimedia, Utilities, and System. Next, let's open the System Settings, the control center of KDE. From themes and fonts to window behavior and display settings, everything is highly customizable here. Clicking on About System shows we're running KDE Plasma version 5.27. It's not the latest, but that's the version supported by Linux Mint's repositories. Unless you switch to a KDE-based distro, there's not much we can do about it. Opening the system monitor gives us real-time info on CPU, memory, and network usage. It's a powerful tool to track system performance and manage running processes efficiently. Under the Detailed Information tab, we get a full hardware overview, including CPU, RAM, and storage devices. It also shows graphics driver details and active network interfaces with real-time status. Let's now head into the Appearance section to customize the overall look and feel of KDE. Here you'll find built-in themes like Breeze, Breeze Dark, and Breeze Toylight. Breeze is the default light theme, clean, minimal, and easy on the eyes. Breeze Dark switches everything to a dark mode, great for low light use. Breeze Twilight gives you the best of both worlds, a dark panel with light window themes. If you want to customize further, Head over to the Application Style section. Here you can adjust the appearance of applications, including the window decorations and the style of widgets. You can also tweak the colors, fonts, and icons used across the system. This allows you to create a truly personalized desktop environment. Take your time to explore the options and find the settings that suit your preferences. Finally, the splash screen setting lets you pick what animation plays while KDE is starting up. As I mentioned earlier, installing KDE over Linux Mint can sometimes cause minor glitches. Here's one I just encountered. The Discover Software Installer refuses to open, even after multiple clicks. It's a known issue in mixed desktop environments, so don't worry too much. You can troubleshoot or reinstall it later if needed. For now, let's move on with the rest of the tour. A sigh of relief. Core applications are working just as expected after switching to KDE. I launched Firefox, and it opened without any issues. Web browsing feels smooth. Next, I tried the Genie Editor, which also worked flawlessly for coding and text editing. LibreOffice Writer opened up with no glitches, ready for documents and writing tasks. All in all, despite the desktop shift, essential apps continue to function reliably. That's a big win. I was curious to see how Nemo and Dolphin, the two file managers, would perform under KDE. Both opened without any issues and worked flawlessly side by side. Nemo, the default for Linux Mint, is lightweight, fast, and minimal, great for users who prefer simplicity. On the other hand, Dolphin, KDE's native file manager, is more polished with features like split views, built-in terminal, and rich previews. It's visually appealing with smooth animations and more customization options. Performance-wise, both did their job well. No crashes, no lags. Ultimately, it comes down to user preference, simple and snappy or sleek and feature-rich. You can always explore all these features in more detail later at your own pace. But to keep this video short and focused, let's quickly move on to something important. How to uninstall KDE if you don't like it, or if you just installed it for fun. Open the terminal 
and run this command. sudo apt remove caret k d e caret plasma s d d m dash dash auto dash remove dash y. This will remove all KDE and Plasma related packages, the SDDM display manager, and any leftover dependencies, all in one go. Be cautious though, this action is permanent and will reset your system back to its original desktop. Clean up leftover KDE packages to free up space and avoid clutter. Reinstall and switch back to LightDM, Mint's default display manager. Then, simply reboot your system to return to your original desktop environment. And that wraps up our KDE Plasma journey on Linux Mint. While it's not officially supported, with a little care, it runs beautifully, offering a modern, sleek, and highly customizable desktop environment. We did face a small glitch with the software store, but the core apps work just fine. Whether you stick with it or try it just for fun, KDE gives you full control over your desktop environment. Let me know in the comments how it worked for you. And if you enjoyed this guide, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more Linux tips.